And it's so clear the American public has embraced this grinning, approachable, unstoppable life force known as Vice President Joe Biden. This is a clip from the time when all the Republican and Democratic senators gathered in the Senate chamber to honor then Vice President Joe Biden for his selfless political work, commitment to family, and lasting friendships. Ever since Biden left his seat, he and his wife have been known to earn about 16 million, according to reports. But recently, the tax records suggested that the presidential candidate and his wife used a strategy that let the couple avoid paying the 3.8 self-employment tax on book and speech income. Welcome to Trendyvert. And in today's video, we're talking about five facts that explain how former Vice President Joe Biden cheated on his taxes. Number 5. The Loophole Joe Biden released his federal and state income tax returns for 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019 recently, in advance of the first debate against President Donald Trump. He and his wife, who is an English professor at Northern Virginia Community College, filed joint returns. The Democratic presidential candidate has apparently used a tax loophole that the Obama administration tried and failed to close, substantially lowering his tax bill. Wondering how that worked? Well, Mr. Biden and his wife, Dr. Jill Biden, routed their income through S-corporations. According to tax returns the couple released this week, they paid income taxes on those profits. But the strategy let the couple avoid the 3.8% self-employment tax that they would have paid had they been compensated directly instead of through their S corporations. The tax savings were as much as $500,000 compared to what the Bidens would have owed if they paid directly or if the Obama proposal had become law. There is no reason for these to be in an S corp, none other than to save on self-employment tax, said Tony Nitti, an accountant at the Reuben Brown LLP who reviewed the returns. The technique is known in tax circles as the Gingrich Edwards loophole, a tax strategy that was highly scrutinized and drew calls for policy changes years ago. Other prominent politicians, including former President Barack Obama and fellow Democrat Hillary Clinton, as well as current contenders for the 2020 Democratic nomination, Sens, Elizabeth Warren, and Bernie Sanders, received their income differently and paid self-employment taxes. Some tax experts have pointed to pieces of President Trump's financial disclosures and leaked tax returns to suggest that he has used a similar tax avoidance strategy. But unlike his Democratic rivals and predecessors in both parties, Mr. Trump refused to release his tax returns, and his administration is fighting House Democrats' attempt to use their statutory authority to obtain them. Democratic presidential candidates have released their tax returns and welcomed criticism on the other hand. I have released all of my tax returns, 22 years, go look at them, 22 years of my tax return. You have not released a single solitary year of your tax return. What are you hiding? Why are you unwilling? Number 4. Contrary to Campaigns Mr. Biden, who was vice president from 2009 to 2017, has led the Democratic field in polls since entering the race. He is campaigning on making high-income Americans pay more taxes and on closing tax loopholes that benefit the wealthy. Mr. Biden has long decried the presence of such loopholes since Ronald Reagan's presidency and said the tax revenue could be used to help pay for initiatives to provide free community college tuition or to fight climate change. We do not have to punish anybody, including the rich, but everybody should start paying their fair share a little bit. When I am president, we are going to have a fair tax code, Mr. Biden said during a speech in Davenport, Iowa. The U.S. imposes a 3.8% tax on high-income households, defined as individuals making above $200,000 and married couples making above $250,000. Wage earners have part of the tax taken out of their paychecks and pay part of it on their returns. Self-employed business owners have to pay it too. People with investment earnings pay a 3.8% tax as well. But people with profits from their active involvement in businesses can declare those earnings to be neither compensation nor investment income. The Obama administration proposed closing that gap by requiring all such income to be subject to a 3.8% tax. 
and it was the largest item on the list of loophole closers. In a plan Mr. Obama released during his last year in office. The administration estimated that proposal, which did not advance in Congress, would have raised $272 billion in taxes in the years 2017 to 2026. Number 3. The Question of His Compensation Under current law, S-corporation owners can legally avoid paying the 3.8% tax on their profits as long as they pay themselves reasonable compensation in accordance to regular payroll taxes. The problem here is in defining reasonable compensation, and the IRS has had mixed success in challenging business owners on the issue for a long time. The Biden's S Corporation reported more than $13 million in combined profits in 2017 and 2018 that were not subject to the self-employment tax. If the entire amount were considered compensation, the Bidens could owe about $500,000 an IRS inquiry might reach a conclusion somewhat short of that. The salaries earned by the Bidens are reasonable and were determined in good faith considering the nature of the entities and the services they performed, the Biden campaign statement said. For businesses that generate money from capital investments or from a large workforce, less of the profits stem from the owner's work, and thus reasonable compensation can be lower. For businesses whose profits are largely attributable to the owner's work, the case for reasonable compensation that is far below profits is harder to make. Experts have been known to use the call-in sick rule to navigate the reasonable compensation question. If the owner called in sick, how much money could the company still make? Number 2. Ordinary Income However, apart from the 3.8% discretion, Biden's tax returns are actually quite ordinary in all other ways. How? Well, like most middle-class Americans, the Bidens paid tax at the ordinary income tax rate, which applies to ordinary things like wages. For clarification, the income that Joe Biden makes comes mainly from their yearly salaries, speaking fees and royalties from books such as Biden's best-selling Promise Me Dad about the last year of his son Bio's life. Number 1. Is Biden the only one? You think Biden is the only one who played smart with his taxes? Well, you are wrong. Rich people do it all the time. In fact, billionaire Warren Buffett at some point realized that his average tax rate was surprisingly lower than his secretary's. Shocking, right? Bill Gates even came out with a confession about how easy tax avoidance was for rich people like him and his friend Buffett, quoting, In terms of revenue collection, you would not want to just focus on the ordinary income rate, because people who are wealthy having a rounding air of ordinary income. This was what inspired Buffett to propose the so-called Buffett Rule, to make the super-rich pay effective tax rates of 30%. It should not surprise us that people running for president have above-average incomes, or that powerful politicians can make large sums in speaker fees, book deals, and so forth. It is fair to ask about these sources of income, but we run the risk of overdoing it and punishing the politicians who do the right thing and put the information out. What do you think about all this? Do you think Biden should be called out for the tax avoidance? Or do you feel that this wasn't as much cheating on his taxes as it was being smart with his filing process? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video too, and share it with your friends.